Hey, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a nicer URL for an S3 bucket. What I'm talking about is in AWS when you upload a file or an object, let's say, it's what it's called, when you upload an object, it has s3.aws.amazon.com or something like that, slash your bucket name, slash uh, the file. If you want to get rid of that and you want to have a custom URL with your domain in there, I'm going to show you how to do that in today's video. I'm going to show you how to do that with Node. Um, a lot of it's going to be in, in Node. I'm going to use a Mern um, uh, boilerplate code. So the video is not focused on React or anything like that. It's just I know the code works and that's why I'm using it. I just want to say that um, you know this video, I didn't have a video for like about the past month. Um, I took about a couple weeks off because of uh, Christmas and stuff. Um, I appreciate the, the patience and uh, I'm going to start posting back on every single Wednesday at 8, 8 a.m. again, so please subscribe. In this video, I'm going to actually set up the, um, the AWS, I'm going to, uh, sorry, the AWS S3 bucket. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to show you how to do that all in this video. I will include in the description um, where to jump to. Uh, you can take a look down below. Um, I'll, not yet, but I'll, I'll tell you when um, you can skip uh, the setup part. Um, this this video is going to be do, doing with Node next video uh, next week. Sorry, I'm going to be doing with uh, PHP. And instead of re-recording this whole setup process, I'm just going to refer back to this video. So if you find yourself on this video uh, because you know you're watching the PHP video, uh, just watch the setup and then you can jump back over and do it with PHP instead of Node. So take a look at my screen right now. Um, I, I have this Medium post that came out uh, the fourth. It was a question someone asked me, um, how do you uh, create a nicer URL? It's pretty simple. They create these ugly URLs. Um, and you want it to look something like like this. Um, you know, uh, and it's not very hard. All you need is some sort of unique identifier. Or prim what you can usually use as a primary key um, here. So I use, you know, the idea is the username and then the file name. Um, that's one example. First thing you have to do is you're going to have to sign up for an AWS account or sign into one. So just head over to aws.amazon.com, sign in. And then we're gonna head over to two things. Um, S3, I'm gonna click it. And under security here, I am. I'm gonna hit S3 and I am opening a new tab. And I'm gonna send you over, this link is in the description. This is a GitHub repos repository, and it's a bunch of videos on how to set up an S3 bucket, and we're just going to follow that. It's pretty quick, just because um, it is screenshots, that's why. I also have a video on it, you can check that one out too, but I've included the link down in the description below, so we're just going to scroll through. Uh, we're going to go through and create our bucket, so just hit create bucket. This has to be a unique name, uh, test bucket name perfect URL, and I'm going to keep it at US East. Hit next, hit next, hit create bucket. Uh, here is it down here. We're all set up there. Next step, just jumping back over to my guide here. I just In this part, I just demo uploading a file and show you how it's private. I create my IM user. Uh, with that, I'm going to have to say that. So jump over to the IM tab. You have under users on the left here, click it. On top, hit add user and you'll have to give this person a name uh, test user nice URL and you have to give them programming access one thing I do recommend actually is opening up uh, Adam or some other text editor to save the information that's about to come so I open up Adam here and I can just save the name if I want and I didn't copy it but the point is I can save the name I don't need to uh, so programming access is all we need Hit next. We're not going to give it any. Uh, we're not going to add it to a group or anything like that. Hit create user, and you have this access key. You'll have to copy that down, paste it somewhere. Show your secret key. Copy that. Paste that somewhere, and close this. And that's all you need to do for now. Here's my test user. What you'll need is this ARN, um, but that will come in a second. So next step is adding the bucket policies. Just scrolling through to get to the bucket policies. So if you go to your S3 bucket, I'm opening that tab. You go to uh, properties, 
permissions, sorry, you go to the permissions tab and you see bucket policies and it's this text editor, it's empty. Head over here, copy the bucket policy and paste it. A couple things, as you can see, I am uh, image bucket one, two, three is not existent. That's the bucket ARN. I just copied it up here on the top. And the other one is the user one, as you can see. And we just copy it from our IM tab. Paste it in there and hit save. And so this gives the, the ability to list the bucket, uh, get the bucket location, get get elements, put elements. It's pretty a pretty loose statement. I remember I recommend actually making it a little better, but for now this is fine. And we have to change the course permissions and we just added the, the ability to put, do a post and a put. And just, I literally just click through all my tabs, but now we're gonna add an inline policy to the actual um, IM user. So if we run, I'm jump back over to my IM tab bottom right corner here I have an add inline policy this has changed a little bit now you just hit JSON uh, and go here copy it this will give you permission to all buckets you can change this if you're not interested in that but I'm just gonna hit re uh, review I have to give it a name demo policy let's call it hit create okay now uh, the policy is added so technically our buckets all set up I mean, you can test it using this code that I've included in this repository, but we're not going to. If you're watching this from the PHP video, you can jump back over to the PHP video. Okay, so now that that's all set up, our next step is to actually set up um, our MERN code. So I've included this one in the description below too, and this is a starting point for uh, Mongo, Express, React, and Node. What we care about is the Node, Express, and I guess we need Mongo too, so we, you actually need all of them. Um, so we'll just head over to the green button here, hit download. It will download. I'm I'm not actually gonna clone it just because. You know what? I'm gonna clone it just just to demo it. And I'm gonna delete the git file. I don't wanna accidentally write over, push like. Um, this is sitting in the trash. So I'm gonna sorry, just one second. I'm gonna switch to my desktop. I'm gonna do it. I'm in my terminal by the way. I'm going to do a git clone, and then I'm going to paste the URL. Let's switch in. I'll remove the git folder, because I am actually I don't want to actually accidentally push up. And then I'm just going to do an npm install. And this will actually take a couple of minutes to install. So what we're going to do is set up our, our code base, essentially. So I'm going to copy these, just in case when I open it, we lose it. Um, and yes, I'd like to open up the mern discard the state. All right. So I have it here. I'm gonna just save mine right to since I'm not on Git or there's no way to make any of this public. I'm just gonna save mine to the README. And the one step you have to do with this code is you have to rename this to be config.json. And if you're using Git, the reason why it's not included is because it's Git ignored. And change it to be config.json and local change this to be localhost and change it to be this port. I'll call this AWS DB, and the database actually does matter because um, we're going to be using it to keep track of what uh, S3 photo points to what um, whatever token we're using. So what we're going to do here is you'll need. Um, I recommend downloading hit this. This is called uh, MongoDB Compass. It just gives you a visualization of your actual data, but we don't actually need to worry about that quite yet. We'll wait for this to finish installing, and then we're going to run it just to verify that everything works. The code is now finished installed, installing, so now we can just do an npm run start dev, just to verify, it's a lowercase d, just to verify that uh, this all works, so you just go to localhost 8080, and I should probably wait till it's done compiling before I just try to open up the page, it's going to take a second here because it's compiling the web pack, and there's our Mern boilerplate code all set up, so we're all set up on that side. Um, one last step we need to do is actually install the AWS SDK package. And the reason why we need that is it's going to be how we uh, get the object essentially um, from the remote uh, ser uh, server. So um, I have included this link in the description below too. 
And this is an example how to do file upload from with uh, Node.js. We don't actually need to do file upload, but we're going to use some of the code uh, just to save typing time. So I'm going to stop the server, I'm going to do a clear, and then I'm just going to run, do npm install uh, aws-sdk-save, and that's going to install the AWS SDK. As that installs, I'm going to kind of explain what's going, what I explained in this post. Essentially, I'm saying uh, use some sort of way to ad identify a uh, unique user. It would be um, if we had a user, let's say uh, me, I'm Keith, and I upload um, a profile photo. Let's say there's only one profile photo allowed per user. Well, we could say that. If you come to my website and go to, I guess, File Works, um, I'm going to actually change it a little bit, and I'm going to use the text there. If you go to my website, and say my website is kw.ca, and then if you go to image slash Keith, that should pull up my photo. Well, we can do that because um, we know that I'm the user with the unique, unique ID is Keith, and I can only have one image. Now, if you if you want to be more specific in profile and you know it can only have one profile image so what we'll do here is when someone hits this you grab their their username and you say okay do a lookup in a database and return um, the S3 key and that would return um, let's say Keith underscore the actual file name I don't know something like this something really ugly that you don't want to put in the URL and so I get this and you just display this in the page and that will save so you go from having um, instead of having I guess it'd be, it would be this I'm assuming that you use a uh, path, a folder with the, the user's name or something like that Instead of having this ugly URL, you would have something much cleaner like this. But the only trick is you need to use the database here. So we're going to have to set that all up. Um, good news is it's all kind of set up for you in terms of the, um, this actual uh, code base. So here they have the counter example, and we're going to work off the counter example. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing, and I'm going to just create, I'm just going to call it user. Um, and I'm going to pretend that. I have a full user object you know, that uh, gets pinged, so this would be like their email and everything gets stored in here, and any, any information about this specific user goes in here, but realistically I'm just going to call it user, and then I'm going to call it, um, the item's going to be user, and the aspects it will have is, let's say, it would have typically like email, and it would have their hashed password, um, make sure clear with that they're hashed password so you're a little bit more secure um, just using this as an example um, but the last thing you would have is their profile image and in this profile image is um, the, the S3 key and so um, yeah we can just leave it as profile image I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I'm also going to add username because I'm going to assume that everyone has a username on my on my app. And that is default. Oh, sorry, it's really dusty in there. My nose is. Um, okay, so username. We're not actually going to create this via an API. That's where all the file upload and stuff comes in, but I'm just, gonna show, I'm just showing you how to get do a get request. So I open up uh, MongoDB Compass, and I'm just gonna like literally type in fake data. So my local host is this twenty seven zero one. It's the standard. There's no um, security. I'm gonna say create database because it doesn't exist. I call it AWS underscore DB. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's say create. I must pass a collection name. Um, sorry, what am I doing? It's called the user. And user has zero documents. 
And so it has an ID that always comes. It has a username. And I'll say my username is Keith. I force them all to be lowercase. I do that all in the back end when I up when I they create their username or whatever. Their email. That'll just be empty. We don't need an email. Password. Let's pretend that they have their password there. And the last one is I just typed it in here. Profile image. And this would just be the file name. And if I can find the right window. And this will be demo.png. I have a file on my, on my desktop that's called demo.png. That's why I'm using this. I'm just going to say insert. And so with this, the way I'm going to store my users, so in case two users upload the same file, is I'm going to create a folder. And the folder is going to be that user's uh, unique ID there, right? And then inside of that, I'm going to upload a demo. Actually, hit upload. Now I have demo.png in that folder. And so as you can see, if, if, if you just up allowed all the users to update, uh, upload into your main folder here, um, you have people overriding each other's work. The idea is each user has their own folder. And in that folder, they have whatever file you can assume you can also handle deletion and things like that but I'm not going to I'm just gonna assume everything's they've already signed up um, and so with that uh, users there now we have to actually add the the whole action of getting um, get we're gonna set up an endpoint uh, where we load the URL so in this case I think I have an empty page here it would be image slash profile slash and then I guess the user's name With that, I'm going to create a new f page called files.js. And the f and files.js, paste that just so I can copy this. Closes off, and then I'm just going to say res dot end and I'm gonna save. I'm gonna jump back over to my terminal. As you can see, uh, the AWS package is installed. I'm going to do an npm run. Uh, so technically, if I go to localhost after this is done compiling, if I go to localhost 8080 slash image slash profile. endpoint works which means we're returning the file uh, in there when it's at the header so that it loads the file and uh, we're going to load it in there. I'll show you how to do all that. The one important thing though is we have to be passing back um, our user so you typically go like that in if it was a React router, I'm just trying to figure out how to do it with, um, with the back end. So it'd be in our request, or sorry, it'd be request.query or something like that. So I'm just going to try that, restart my router, um, my server, change to be u slash. Oh, perfect. So in my request, I have um, you as an object, and that's where I get my grab my user. So we're gonna try this as I'm gonna write it in different syntax then. Oh yeah, before.
before I restart that server, I just want to make sure I print out uh, what u is. Console log dot u slash u. It's going to restart, and this is just going to confirm that we get the proper user. I do that, that should say Keith. Yeah. If I remove that, that should say unknown. So that would be like if, if you put in an invalid uh, URL. Okay. So with all that, and that's all set up, our username's all set up, we'll have to add a um, find. Uh, so essentially, what we'll do is take a look at our counters. We're going to import our model object here. Similar to what we have, I'm going to do a user. Um, no, I want to change the font. So I'm just going to close counters. Um, so now we have uh, import the user object, and so we can do a Mongo query or mongoose query, find, and then the first one is the parameters. I guess this would be the result. And these would be the documents returned. So our requirements is uh, username be equal to you. And we want that to be an exact match. So if error, then res dot end. Um, if the documents aren't equal to one, that's also an error. I'm not going to handle errors because if, if they find more than one user, there's something else broken in your system. If not, we can just do the following. Docs at zero should be your one user. And with all that, I've saved it. I'm going to restart my server. And this printout should be our one user that we entered in manually. Error is zero, zero. Okay, so I can't actually figure out why the, um, I'm getting this error. It just doesn't seem uh, to make a lot of sense. So what I'll do is I'll just do the following. I think it's something to do with my, uh, something to do with my, with my actual, um, my schema with the mongoose, with Mongo. So. Typically, you'd build all this stuff with, uh, you'd build it via an actual, sorry, I'm typing into it. Typically, you'd build all the stuff via API, so like they would sign up and that's where you'd create the new user and you would do it manually. Um, so I'm just going to actually do that via API. So we just do user-save error. Res that end. So log the error. Otherwise, it should just end. Uh, and then user will be. I'm literally just gonna borrow all this code here. Uh, well, where user will be. User dot username. Be you. And then profile image. Demo.png. So our server compiled. I'm just going to reload this. No, I want to reload. I want to do I create. So it says saved. Let's head over to Mongo here. Just do the command R just to refresh the whole page. I just want to see. I just want to see if it's like an actual Mongo issue. Like for some reason it was creating two instances of the same database, or it typed something different. No, it seems that like I have AWS DB here. There was some sort of issue. 
users versus user. I create this one. You know what? I'm going to delete this one too. I have no idea which one the correct one is. Users. Reload this page again. Refresh. Add uh, the Mongo compass. I swear it's user. I don't see users being typed anywhere. Did I completely just like. Oh. I have no idea. Uh, point is, we now have our user. So, hypothetically, if I change this to be image now, it's going to return found, which is perfect meaning I can really stop using this. If I take a look at, I'm doing a lot of jumping, if I look at my uh, URL here, uh, docs is returning one element, here's my user. Um, as you can see, profile image. What I'll use is this ID and the profile image to generate the key for the AWS. So that's our next step, is I can actually close this too. In files, ignoring the create user here, in here, I'm just going to do the uh, cons and then user and then docs and then zero just so it's better naming. I'm going to create a key and key, what it will be, will be, um, will be the user's ID plus the user's uh, user.profile image. And that will be the key uh, to access an S3. So the reason why I had you have you look at this file is because this is using the AWS library. So I'm just going to copy the first line there. Um, bring in the AWS library. You have these three lines, which are uh, global constants, just to save you typing. So I'm going to copy my variables into the user key. And the very last one is the bucket name, and you can find that on on the S3 bucket. On the, it's up here, or it's also in the URL. It's a little more easy to copy in the URL. I recommend copying and pasting all these things just because um, typing mistakes are the worst kind. Okay, so uh, I want I, I keep jumping back and forth. I'm back on this file upload. What I'm going to do is copy all of this. paste it here. I'll let you see what it is. Um, so here it is. What's happening is it's creating an S3 instance, um, S3 bucket instance. I don't think this is completely correct with the create bucket, but it works. I'm actually going to also change this around so it works a little differently. And so here it is. Uh, indentations off. So it creates a params object, and we don't need a body because we and we already have our key, with the bucket name. So the next thing we need to do is bucket dot um, s3 bucket dot get object retrieves the object. It returns an error and data. And essentially, if it's the error, we'll start by printing out the error so we know what it is, and just return an error message, which would be. Error zero zero three. Otherwise, print out uh, data for now, and we just want to know what that is. Okay, so that works. Um, so now we're just doing npm run start dev on your terminal. I, I keep looking at my camera uh, because it looks like it's going to die. We'll see. <laughs> There's a switch over here. I'm back on my uh, URL here, I'm going to hit refresh, error 003, uh, missing key, and bucket, missing bucket. That's the problem, I didn't actually pass in params, let's try that one more time. If it says missing key, then I'm just going to, or if the key doesn't exist, I'm going to assume that it's an invalid path, I have to look at the path, but 
that was both the bucket and the key, so it was pretty clear that I didn't pass in something. And I'm just gonna refresh the page, and I'm getting that same error. Specific key does not exist. Okay, exact error I just called. Um, let's try. I just want. I just want to see what the key is. And run it again. It's kind of annoying having to do this constant uh, running and stuff, but it's not a hot reload on the back end. It's just a hot reload on the React side. such key. Oh, yeah, that's why there's no such key, because I changed the user. Right? Yeah. Essentially, if you were actually doing this, you could just return the error and then say, if no such key is returned, you throw return a error, a error a code and then if you get an error code on the front end and then you just say that like you just load the default image or something like that okay so it returned um, as you can see body it contains the actual image contents uh, you can see content type here you can see content uh, uh, content length things like that so what we're going to do is just going to set the headers and all we want to do is display this image so that it comes out with a nice URL so, you do res.setHeader, you say content-type, and you do data.contentType, and then you do res.end, res I think it is, and we do uh, data.capital-b body. I think that will do the trick, just to display it in browser. Do an npm run start dev. That's that's a content meme type. All right. Don't need to wait. All right, and there it is. Uh, there's the file I have. As you can see, it's it's sitting on S3. It has this weird S3 URL that's being loaded actually, but instead we're just using this short URL, um, image slash profile slash the username. I mean, you can get this even shorter. You can make just literally just make this I slash, um, and then make it I and then the username or or you can make it you know if you use like the um, I don't know how to do it specifically but where you put the variable in so it'd be like this so instead of user it'd be the actual username and that would know you'll be able to grab the username from the URL and it was tons of way to, uh, ways to do this I hope this video wasn't too long or uh, too boring <laughs> I'm excited to get making videos again so uh, please subscribe, please check out the video next week when I do this in PHP if you're interested in doing it in PHP, and uh, stay tuned.